Hi guys, I'm Rochelle Boo Keeling from King of the Nerds, and you're listening to Jesse Elaine on Bring Me Your Torch. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And this is Big Brother. Oh yeah. Bound, 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 put down her down, bound, 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 put down her down, down. Sorry. I really love the intro and the theme song to Big Brother. I don't know why. But in case you haven't guessed, this is going to be our Big Brother 17 uh, it's preseason podcast talking about all the all the people we're going to be on the show. They released it earlier today and they had some of the interviews on CBS All Access. And I'm getting pretty excited because this is, I don't know about you, this is probably my favorite reality show, maybe tied with the challenge. Uh, I think this is a lot better than the challenge. They have live feeds here 24-7. The challenge should definitely do that, by the way. The challenge should have live feeds. I mean, imagine if you could just watch those idiots acting stupid all the time. It'd be fantastic. And if you want to watch the Big Brother live feeds, you can sign up for CBS All Access. Only five ninety nine a month now. Five ninety nine a month. That's a steal. Even if you never watched it for five ninety nine, you can be like, oh well, I just I blew six bucks this Wait, month. Wait, what, what did it do? used to be? Wasn't it twenty five? You know, three years months? ago it was. Back in the day, it was done through like a real player, and then it was. Done, this is the first year, I guess, that it's only done through all access. But it, it did seem cheap. I mean, it's going to cost me like what fifteen, twenty dollars, basically, for the year. That's that's not too bad, especially when you put in what I get out of it. You know? Well, if you get like a million or two people to do that, how many millions of dollars is that for CBS? Right? They're already the number one network. Do they really need more money? Come on, less Moonves. But. Um, so before we get into this now, there are only 14 people who were announced and I think there's usually about 16 yeah. and I read somewhere that there is a twist that is going to be, well, there's gonna be a summer of twists as always, but there's another <laughs> twist coming that is going to be released soon. So do you think those are two returning guests, maybe two captains like they did a few seasons ago? I have no idea. Cause I really have only been watching for the last three or four seasons. Watch my birthday present, damn it. I know. I just haven't had enough time. I'm so engulfed and consumed with this podcast. It's my life now. You can actually watch every episode on CBS All Access, too. Hold on. Can you stream the live feeds to your phone? So if you're on the road, can you watch the live feeds? I'm pretty sure, though. I don't know what your data data plan is. I could eat it up pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm. But, you know, a little bit here and there. Oh, 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 the one that we love, the... um. What's the uh, blog that we love that does Big Brother? Well, there's a BB couple Dish, of them. Right? BB Dish. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. There's a couple. There's Jokers. There's a whole bunch of them. But you have to be careful with those. I mean, I don't mind because I follow the live feeds. But if you're waiting for the show, that stuff will spoil it because it, it tells stuff as it happens. Like, like you know, you'll you'll yeah. be able to figure out from watching the feeds who is the who is on the block like five days before yeah. it actually happens. Yeah. So, you got to be careful. All right. We've been babbling enough. Let's let's go in and on the characters or on the contestants or the house guests. Go in and basically on the people who are not you because you didn't apply to the show. Aww. I'm gonna keep busting on you for that. Until At least production till the end of notices season. me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're the twist. <laughs> By the way, in, in in Big Brother Canada, there's some. I think it's like a snack or something called Twistos, and they're always like, "This is the newest Twistos twist." <laughs> like, Great Falls. We're gonna throw somebody off. <laughs> Well, we're going to start with um, split down the middle, men and women. First with Audrey Middleton. Men and She's women. 25. <laughs> split down the middle, men and women. Anyways, Love start it. with Audrey Middleton. She's 25 from Villa Rica. I don't know. They probably don't say it like that in Georgia. Villa Rica. And it's a, I don't know if a lot of people in Georgia are saying that. And she's a digital media consultant. And, you know, you look at, her, at the profile and you know, considers her mom ah. and dad among her best friends. Uh, she was an MMA ring girl. And she, well, a couple of you know, she likes to look fabulous, but she doesn't mind getting dirty and gritty. Can we ban the word fabulous? I mean, I feel like it means nothing. Sex the, well, Sex in the City. I just, I just imagine stupid uh, Sarah Jessica Parker going, "Oh, even though you may think I look ridiculous, I look fabulous." When she has like a plastic bag on her head or something, you know? I look, yeah, it's all I think about. And something else that Audrey said struck me as stupid. I guess is how you would put that. Audrey believes that fear is an illusion. That's that's something that dumb people say because they think it sounds smart. I think it's totally true, though. Fear is it's real. all in your head. Fear if you're scared of something, it's all in your head. Like fear is good. Fear keeps you alive. Th- fear you're tells you what you're fight or flight. We're talking about just interact normal interactions every day with people in life. 
you know, it, it, saying that fear is an illusion is like up there with the the matrix saying you know there is no spoon <laughs> you know yeah it's oh, i think you're thinking anyways. too much about it i don't know but you know oh by the way i i, I left one part out um audrey is transgendered actually is she surprise yeah we, you know that I told you before, and you're just making that up. I know, but when I looked at her photo in the first place, I never thought that she was transgender. I actually thought she was hotter than every other chick in the house, and that's why they put her first. Well, I don't really think this is the most attractive group of women. I mean, not that I'm I'm no okay, young Marlon okay, Brando okay. myself. All right, but all right, it's... all right. I'm gonna have to say this is not the most attractive group of men. Oh uh, well, I mean, I, I I'm looking at this quickly. I'm going. To, I mean, Clay is a good looking dude, right? Clay is the only one. Yeah, that's, for, that's probably the only one I would go through and say, you know, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we'll get there. And I don't like Clay for other reasons. Or maybe I do. I, but I, can I we just, just talk really... about how CBS put a transgender person first? No. The question is, though, would this person have been cast if not for Caitlyn Jenner? Are they trying to piggyback on Oh, that? totally. And that's why they put her first, which is all right, because they're kind of, you know, riding the wave, if you will. And you know what's going to happen is that you remember a couple seasons ago when a bunch of the cast got in trouble for saying yeah. things. Oh, yeah. They were racist. And all this. You know people are going to be talking about this and it's going to – who knows? I, if people are talking about it and they're just curious, I really hope that CBS doesn't, doesn't cut it, it in a way that makes it look worse you know, than it really is. But you know, if, people, if people say things that need to be yeah. called out, I hope they call them out. Oh, yeah. And so, so uh, – I wonder, I didn't see how long Audrey, who used to be Adam, I looked up earlier, she's 25, so it's still pretty young. But, uh, right. you know, MMA, MMA ring girl, you know, all the all the, the drunk dudes of that thing were like, oh, yeah, she's hot. Probably have no idea. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So, do you think she's going to reveal in the house that she's transgender? I'm sure. You know, I'm sure people will be able to pick it up on it, maybe. I don't know. If not, she has to. Yeah, I would. I would think so at some point. Here's, gonna have, here's what you do: is if if I only watched a little of her on the um, interview with Jeff today on on All Access, if she, I mean, she looks relatively good. You know, I, I mean, if, again, you're right. From looking at her right in the picture, you can't tell. But uh, and if she can hide it well enough, you what you do is you save it until you think you're gonna get kicked off, and then you cry about it and say how hard it was growing up. Yeah, it sounds sad, but you have to you have to save your personal tragedies and your personal things, and then bring them out at opportunity. You're still times. not going to get the million dollars. Just just calm down. Yeah, you know I don't even know who my favorite is yet. Hold on, now, hold on. She compares herself to Dexter Morgan. Is Dexter? Who's Dexter Morgan? You know the TV show Dexter. He's going around killing That's serial killers. That's weird. Like, why would yeah. you say that? She said heads are going to roll. I don't. You know, I don't know. The running theme on a majority of these people is that they're not afraid to say how smart they are or how good looking they are. It's like, oh, you know what? Pump the brakes here. Okay, the only one know. that's probably intelligent in this house is the one that actually has his PhD. And that's probably the dentist. Everybody else is just an airhead from California, right? No? No, the nerdy the nerdy kid at the end. Oh, he's a genius. Sorry, he's an engineer but, and he graduated. From, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, enough about Audrey. I'm sure we'll be talking about Audrey many, many times. You can, are you going to draft her? I will not. I'm, I'm actually having a very difficult time figuring out who I'm going to draft. But I wouldn't tell you even <laughs> if I was. You know what? You steal my people. Now, I already hate this next person, Austin, <laughs> Austin Madelson, age 30, currently living in Woodland Hills, California, an occupation professional wrestler. So his hippie parents... Uh, let him quit school before eighth grade. <laughs> they sound like wonderful parents. I'm not sure he's very lucky. Because you know, I have a list of people, of groups, people that I hate. Number one, hipsters, the worst. Number two, Nazis. Number three, hippies. I feel like for you, it should be Nazis first and then hipsters, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, I, mean? I, I have to, I have to worry more about hipsters than I do Nazis. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's not as many of them running around these days with hipsters taking all over. And it hurts me because my dad was a hippie in Greenwich Village back in the day. He was a hippie and a Nazi. He, he, my dad was not a Nazi. <laughs> he, was a, he was the guy the Nazis were trying to kill. <laughs> Love so, it. Yeah, but, he, but he's talking, you know, I have self-discipline. I was able to get up at 6 a.m. and exercise. <laughs> he's got a, he's, it's like, oh, he's also very smart. He's got a master's degree in medieval history. Oh, yeah, that's, that's going to be very helpful in life. You know? Yeah, why don't you, uh. Why don't you get a... Uh, Medieval times. 
yeah, really, why don't you get a PhD in Australian literature or something? Who gives a crap? It's, um, you know, getting a degree in medieval history is cool if you want to be a history teacher in college, a professor with a very, like, select, specialized area. Yeah. This dude's a wrestler. So, like, what's the point? Like, oh. Is there any you know, correlation I'm, 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 there? <laughs> He's like, I'm a big fan of Geoffrey Chaucer, you know? It's, okay, that's great. How do you go from being a wrestler to a medieval history? Yeah, he went from medieval history yeah, to wrestling. Yeah, exactly. You know, I really, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, but this guy annoys me. I guess I looked him up because he's oh, a WWE wrestler. Um, by the way, for me, it's always going to be WWF, not WWE. But that's a side <laughs> point. WWE wrestler. But he's like in their junior varsity team. I guess like they have like a, a level of wrestling that's not WWE. It's kind of like they're, they're where the rookies go to train and crap. I think it's like NXT. So I don't know this dude. His wrestling name is Judas Devlin. So I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe he'll prove me wrong and he'll be fantastic. But I don't so know. So I would be curious to find out the backstory to all these people. So when does when does the season premiere of Big Brother? I believe. On Wednesday or Thursday of next week, I th- think it's the twenty fourth. So I think it's I think it's two night premiere Wednesday and Thursday. All right. Well, maybe we can put something out before then, talking about kind of what their peers think about them, any rumors coming out about them, each individual, and then you know, because we have those little bios that CBS put out, and that's all well and good, but there's really a backstory to everybody. And you know, with these people, especially the women, you can't tell quite yet. They're going to put out usually like, the bikini pictures oh, yeah. while hanging around the pool. That's where you really get a sense of what's going on down there. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't like this next person either. Why? Becky, Bur- Becky Burgess, age twenty six, currently from Denver, Colorado, in occupation is retail manager. Woohoo! It says on the outside, Becky is the all American girl next door who the men will fall in love with and the girls will want to befriend. I mean, like you know, again, I'm, I'm not gonna say I mean I'm no matinee idol myself, but I'm looking at her. And she does not strike me as a person that all of the men are going to fall in love with. I feel like there's not that much there. She she thinks she's like a young Julia Roberts or something, you know? Like, oh, I got to me. be honest, I would say she so she looks more transgender than Audrey does. It's, it's really mean, but honestly, that that is an accurate statement. Um, but it might just be her smile, and we'll have to see her demeanor. It's a chin, yeah, yeah. She's you know inside though she's strategic and aggressive competitor, and this is what I don't get. Being from Denver. She's always been athletic and outdoorsy. What is that? Denver? Are they all athletic? Everybody who lives here athletic? Yeah, it's like Austin. That's why I'm moving there. Duh. They all smoke pot and they like to climb mountains. Duh. Yeah, well, something tells me if you're all smoking pot, you're sitting around eating pork rinds instead of going out and going and for, not for going a run or mountain. something. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, eh, I'll do that tomorrow. All right, let's you know? go to Clay Honeycutt because I think well, before what, one, one more thing. I'm sorry to stop you there. But again, her last thing in her profile says, she knows her looks give her an edge in life, but doesn't rely on them. What? My looks give me an edge in life, please. Yeah, it's a little I'm bit sorry. arrogant. I just, they need to tone it down a little bit. But as we progress, it gets worse yes. and worse. So well, here's your boy, Clay. This guy has a pretty cool name, Clay Honeycut. I like it. Oh, God, it's just so bad. It sounds like a stage I, name. I like the cut of his jib. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Texas. He lived on a ranch with his mom who rescued exotic animals. Like, what, like a chupacabra? Like, what, what, what's going on there? You know what I'm noticing is they have a lot of really young people, like 23, you know, still in college. And then they have people who are a couple people who are like late, mid to late 20s and then the early 30s. But they don't have anybody that's in their 40s or 50s, like last season with Donnie. Back in the day, there was a lot of, uh, older people i don't like that like in, in dan giesling's first season this guy jerry got all mad and called him judas and stuff it's pretty <laughs> funny but they they did have people who were not young and it was sometimes hard for them to to fit in by the way that guy jerry was like, getting pissed off and he fell into a to a pool it's pretty funny but yeah i i think they need some diverse ages maybe they just assume that they want young people who are all going to sleep with each other and stuff like that right yeah i totally agree they probably just want them all to this big <laughs> cess full of sex Young <laughs> Clay's occupation is graduate student at Texas A and M. He's a former football player there, and he graduated in just three and a half years. I want to say to him, "Hey, bully for you! I did that too. Big friggin' hey, deal." You know, hey, when world. I'm um when I'm in my uh early thirties, I'm gonna try when I try out again. I'll be in my early thirties next year. I'm not gonna age myself here. I'll be but in my my occupation is definitely gonna be graduate 
student at University of Texas, even though I've had a million, you know, careers and everything. So I was going to be, not going to be a podcaster. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I will bring me. You're right. Never mind. Let's backtrack yeah. that. I'll be podcast or bring me your torch. And one of the things that strikes me about Clay here, he's like, oh, I'm smarter than most people give me credit for. Yeah. Um, in my experience, people who say that aren't smarter than people give them credit for. It's kind of like Fredo in Godfather 2 who's running around. I'm smart. I'm smart. No, you're not. Oh, you're done. God. Don't ever say that. Why? Hey, do you think the uh, cast members can all read each other's bios before they go on, or are they just whisked away? They've got to. Something's got to be because you know they're there already. I wonder if they're, they've got to just be kind of in sequester right now. Yeah, I would imagine exactly. for the next week. While this comes out, and you're telling me it comes out next week, the actual show, that or whole week, week yeah, is them being sequestered. It's, it's got to suck <laughs> what do you do you catch up on game of thrones or something watch watch breaking bad on. the entire season hold on because you watch you watch the live feeds when do the live feeds actually turn on and when do they basically after and when do they start filming i believe the live feeds do not go on until the first episode okay you know because they don't want to they don't want to show what's going but on how long I, are know, they filming before the first episode you know, they, they present it like it's live, but I think it probably isn't. I don't know. Usually, because I remember last last season when they, the night they first did the live feeds, you're right. You know, they are filming because they are aware of when the live feeds come on. Because that's when Joey with the blue hair starts streaking around naked. Yeah. You remember? Like with, with Zach Rancy and the other dude, with the, was it Hayden? That the other dude? Yeah. So they and know. that so actually um, takes us to, de- yeah. Takes us to Devon that takes us to Devon Rogers, Rogers who's going to get voted to out first in that first you know week, just like Joey did when she was streaking around with her blue hair. So, I, I think Devon will last a little bit, but not long. Not long. I started reading and I'm like, oh, her family's extremely religious. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. And her mother was a minister and her uncle was a pastor. And then it goes, ah, she went to the beach or hung out with friends instead. I'm like, okay, I'm in on that. Yeah. But oh, we had a couple poker folks in this season. Did we? And they all they all think they're so smart. Oh, I'm a, I'm a poker dealer, so I've studied the game, and I blah 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 yeah. blah. I, I think she's one of those people. It's always good to have high self esteem, but I think that she has unusually high. Like I, her esteem is higher than it should be. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, when you're at 27, you think you're just God's gift to the you know the earth, and that's just not the case. You know, when you get to be my age at 34, you realize Reality you're God's gift to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you're the Satan's <laughs> gift to the earth, more like it. But you know, she's a single mother, which is great. But I really have a feel like she's going to be on a kick that I'm a I'm a powerful woman. I'm a single mother. I you know that kind of thing because there's, there's a lot of girl power here in this in this cast. Oh, God, but it seems like it's, yeah. it's there's too much though. It's like you know you don't have to keep saying that you're a powerful yeah. businesswoman. But you know you know what I'm saying like, to crumble. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, good for them. I'm proud. But be, a, be like a business person. Just because, like, you know, back running back quickly to Audrey, on TMZ, Audrey said that she wants to use this as a showcase to talk about, you know, just like how um, Bruce Jenner is. And in my view, the best way to showcase that is to be like everybody else. You know, be like everybody. Don't go around talking about it yeah. nonstop. Just live your life and go, hey, middle America who's watching this for the first time. You, I'm just like everybody else. There's no reason to, you know, not like me. I think that's why Frankie was so successful because he never really said I'm the greatest because my sister and I'm the greatest because I was on Broadway. He just did his thing and he ended up being getting really far in the game. Oh, I hate Frankie so. Well, we much. hate him, but he got really far because of that. I, I am going to just remind people because you know, we only cover our first podcast was covering the finale of Last Big Brother. That last season of Big Brother was my least favorite season of them all. All right. Well, hopefully this season it. will be a lot better. So let's go to Jace Agoli. Now, you know, this is, do you think Jace, is Jace a common name? Jace? Is this a guy or a girl? It's a guy. But you you don't meet many people named Jace, correct? Well, unless you're like, well, Just I'm not going to talk trash. But yeah, Just no, say you say don't. Thank you. This is the second Jace to be on Big Brother. Is it? On season, I, I believe it was season five. Sounds like discrimination five, there was to me. A Jace. Reverse discrimination. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe she changed her name to Jace. She can get on next time. I mean, we got a couple of Haydens on the show. I mean, there's a lot of, you know. Now, if there's another evil dick that gets on the show, then you know it's crazy. <laughs> so. Well, then we know we all have to go to the doctor. <laughs> but anyway, that's. <laughs> yeah. Jace is 23, lives in Venice Beach, is a personal trainer. Dude grew up in. Okay, he's annoying me already, too. 
I forgot how much this guy annoys me. I'm sorry to stop there <laughs> midway, but I uh, grew up in Georgia, and he's an, an adrenaline junkie. Why like, does he annoy he? you so bad? We'll get there. Being an, saying you're an adrenaline junkie annoys me too. I feel like you're trying to be Patrick Swayze in Point Break, like you know, giant. It's, it's just just go. I, I like to surf. He, he snowboards. He skateboards semi professionally. But here's where he really pisses me off. <laughs> and he shows that he's 23 and just stupid as hell. He considers himself a modern day adventurer who models his life after Indiana Jones. Oh, my what? God. I mean, like you know what? I love Indiana Jones as much as the next guy. You know, Harrison Ford's awesome, but to model. <laughs> Model your life after Indiana Jones. First of all, let's look at things here. Indiana Jones is a professor. Is he a professor? No. Indiana Jones is an archaeologist. Is he an archaeologist? No. 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 He travels. No. He travels. Does Jay travel? No. Indiana Jones. He doesn't. He never snowboards or skateboards. But Jace does. Maybe they both hate snakes. Maybe that's part of it. You know my favorite thing. My favorite what? thing ever is that there's a comedian that's like. Oh, yeah, I love to travel. That's my thing. You know, when people go, oh, that's my thing. I love to travel. No, traveling's not your thing. If everyone does it, it's not your thing. Snowboarding, skateboarding, it's not your thing, dude. You mean, I love to travel. When I got in an airplane, I was happy to be seated about a, around a bunch of like-minded individuals who are also traveling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love clay sculpture, and I display it every week down in, like, New York City. That's your thing. Not everyone does it. You capitalize on it. Dude. Snowboarding, skateboarding, not your thing. Everyone does it. I think the reason why this bugs me is that his his profile is by far the smallest. There's not much there. <laughs> and I'm thinking there may not be much up upstairs either. You know what I'm saying? I might draft him, though. I think he's good. I mean, personal trainer from Venice Beach. I mean, talk about a cliche. So, James. Now, I actually like James. James Huling, Huling, 31. Currently in Wichita Falls, Texas, and is a retail associate, which basically means he works like Walmart, right? I love James. Um, you know, this guy spent the first part of his life being raised in a boy's home in South Carolina because his mother passed away from cancer and his father couldn't care for him. And in the early, and by the way, Asia, um, James is Asian. And the reason I say that is because it, it says in his early teens, he was adopted by a Caucasian family and has called them mom and dad ever since, which is the way it should be. It shouldn't matter. I don't have anything negative to say about him yet, although that could last. I'm so I mean, I in love with his camo that he's wearing in his photo, by the way. It says that he embraces his southern roots and has served in the military for six years, which is good. But I got to see what these southern roots are. You know, I mean, are we talking about like, you know, yokel southern roots or just like being like, I'm happy from the south? I don't know. We'll see. I love this guy. He keeps getting better. He was raised, you know, in a broken home because he was in, you know kind of in limbo and then he met his family that he calls mom and dad now and he's from the south which obviously i'm moving there so i love him and then he's in the armed forces does it get much better than that james no texas is not the south texas is texas the south is like mississippi yeah well no texas and all 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 of the above it's all the south if you move to like new mexico you wouldn't say i'm moving to the south would you even though it is in the south I had to laugh, though. You just said that it just keeps getting better for him. Well, life started pretty crappily, so of course life is going to get better for him. It got worse after his mom died and his dad couldn't take care of him. I feel really bad for this guy. That's rough. All right. That's totally rough. I hate, this, I, I hate this next dude, too, Jason Roy, 25, from Massachusetts, and is a market supermarket cashier. I think he's awesome. He's a skinny, and this is, I'm, I'm not just making this about him. This is what he put in his profile. He's short and skinny with a big mouth. Yeah, that always works out well. You know, he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be talking trash to some of the other dudes in the house, and a lot of these guys, I think, they'll write checks that their mouth can't catch, or their mouth will write checks that their body can't cash. Cash. I or, want this guy for saying. one reason and one reason only. Why? Because he, well, he want he wants to do what Joey couldn't do in the first episode, was was create an all female alliance, and because he wants to do that, I'm all for him. Yeah, but guess what? He's not a woman. And this is that's where the problem lies. Do you think he's that, gay? Well, I'm, I'm almost certain he is, but I, I would not, you know, well, yeah, I, I would not. He, he says that he has too much style and sass to be around in his, in his underwear or in his uh, pajamas all day. I think, yes. But, you know, that's just prejudging. So I don't want to say that'd be awesome. Whatever, whatever. You know, you have to be careful because if you alienate the guys of the house, yeah. say he does that and you alienate the guys and they win the head of the household. They're going to be pissed off at you for screwing it up for them. Well, they just you know ultimately saying? have a yeah a stronger bond. 
He also keeps saying that he's one of the last people picked for teams when he was in elementary school, but then he surprised him with his determination and his speed. And he wants to make it just it just upsets me that he's <laughs> I don't know why it upsets me, but it does. He's like, oh, yeah, what I what I just insinuated earlier, he won't hang around the house in his PJs all day because he has too much style and says, Oh, please. You know what? He looks annoying, he sounds annoying. He's all yours in the draft. All right. Well, I'm not going to draft him. I'll have Ron draft him. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, I hate him, but I hope he wins. All right. So John McGuire, 27, Jefferson Township, Pennsylvania, occupation, dentist. I have <laughs> or... to see this guy demeanor, this guy's demeanor to really get on board with him. So by the way, his name is John, John McGuire, a.k.a. Johnny Mac, the rock star dentist. Jerry McGuire. So he, he was annoying. He was annoying me. And I looked him up. And him and this and this other dude he was with basically were at some concert. It was like a flash flood, and he saved some girl. His friend saved a girl. What? He was in there, so I'm like, okay. So I'm like, he's legit. And I checked on his uh, his health grades uh, reviews, and you know, I guess he's gotten seven that are four and a half stars. So really? I guess he's pretty good. But this, but the dude is all about showmances, which I think he's gonna have. You know, he's. I don't think he's gonna be as Don Juanish as he thinks. And he's says he's single and proud of it. And if any girl wants more of a relationship. He's going to start acting annoying and geeky, so they dump him. Wow, please. I love this on so many levels. I love how he has a strategy to already dump the chicks. But I have to see his demeanor to see if girls are really going to be with him or not. We'll see. We'll that's, see. The, that's, that's the thing. Like He's ready to dump chicks. And who, who says any of these girls want to go make out with them to begin with or anything? Yeah, but why wouldn't you? He's a doctor by trade. so. Yeah, but, it, but he could be a giant dork or a nerd or an a-hole you just don't know you know some people elaine care more about what people you know people are other than just their bank account <laughs> anyway, honey sorry. he has more money than you can even imagine he's from pennsylvania so i'm sure the cost of living there is cheap and the salary's high for a dentist oh, i'm snap. i'm standing in line buddy no <laughs> he's all yours um liz nolan is 23 she is born and bred in miami and as a marketing coordinator, now she says she is a mainstay in the Miami nightlife oh, circuit. Oh, God. I just watched like a murder mystery on, what is it, ID Investigates, Lester Hull on a murder mystery in Miami. I'm just picturing her the entire time. Get out of the club scene, girl. You're 23 years old. You don't want to end up dead. Let's win Big Brother and everything will change for you. Be careful what's going on over there, by the way. It sounds like the mic is moving or hitting it a lot or something. There's a lot of feedback. Um, well, you know what? When I hear that she's a mainstay in the Miami nightlife, nightlife circuit, I just imagine that she's chilling out and live every night and getting like uh, these Colombian cartel owners to buy her like forty dollar drinks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like I know people yeah. who've gone to college in Miami and people who, but I've never known anybody to like, be born in Miami. Because like, when I was in Miami, I mean, you were there recently a couple in the last couple of years too. <laughs> It's a lot of women. I, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when I was we were on with Duke that the women from behind look twenty five and from their face look like <laughs> sixty. You know, they're all leathery. No like, one's leathery. born in Miami. No one ever is born. They just all migrate there. <laughs> they go there to die and then have plastic surgery and be born again. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you think you know, she'll I, get it, far in the game? So many of these women, I really just need to get a sense of who they actually are. Yeah. I mean, if you watch the, the clip from All Access today, but you need to see the and see them interact. But you know. At first, I liked her. I mean, well, at first, I didn't like her because of that stuff. But then, okay, you know what? She graduated cum laude, and she spends plenty of time keeping up on pop culture. Now, she may be the one that we have to, uh, you know, focus zero in on at the end of the season, get her on the show. Oh, yeah. And she's a, totally. she's a true romantic and wears her heart in her sleeve. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much like that, too. But here's her downfall. She's going to have a hard time separating the game from her personal feelings. And, you know, that's tough. you got to be able to do that or... You can't make smart decisions, in my opinion. Not at all. Not at all. And, you know, just finishing off with a uh, little Liz here. She says she'd come off as intimidating and girls could be catty. So she plans on working extra hard in relationships for the girls. <laughs> right. Good for you. Good for you, Liz. <laughs> all right. We got, we got four more. We're gonna, <laughs> we've got four more we're going to zoom through here. Because I know you, you've got to run. We got Meg, Meg Maley, I guess. Mally Maley. 25. Yeah. Born, bred in Jersey, living in New York City, occupation server. She's the new Nicole in the house. I feel like. Mm, I don't know. I, I, I think she's gonna be more annoying than her. I liked Nicole. I thought she was cute. I don't know how I feel about her. You know, first of all, are we gonna get the annoying Jersey accent. I don't know. And oh no. 
here's what really pissed me off. Not pissed, pissed me off is the wrong word, but it's just, I've, I've, this is not new to me. I've seen these things. She wants to, in high school, she joined the hockey and the baseball teams to flirt with boys. Oh, God. You know, she's always been boy crazy. And she says that straight guys are going to love her because she's a guy's girl. Yep. Gay guys are going to love her because of her sass. And girls will love her because she's non-threatening. Now, that may be the case in the in the latter two. I have to get a sense of whether she's a guy's girl by watching her. I.e., everyone's going to hate her. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's kind of girl that would be kicked out the first episode. Well, why don't they like me? Yeah. <laughs> we got Shelly Poole. It, now, here's so funny. You, you mentioned how all these people are young. And I looked at Shelly, and I think she, I actually think Shelly's the best looking of them all. Really? But she's, I go, God, she's so old just looking at her. And I go, wait a second. She's like a year younger than me. She's 33. <laughs> like, it just shows how the, as the show, you know, skews young so much. And that um, she has a fraternal twin. By the way, she's from Atlanta, interior designer. Fraternal twin, married when she was 28, and divorced a year Ouch. later to meet, start dating a friend. Like, whoa, whoa, She whoa. just has you, a lot of baggage all around, I think. But it's that shows me somebody who jumps into something very quickly without putting a lot of thought into yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, she got divorced after a year, and she immediately jumped into something else. And the reason why she's on the show is she had a boyfriend who mocked her, so she probably just on a whim said, "I'm going to try out for this to screw him over," and did it. That so, sounds a lot like why I wanted to try out for a Big Brother. <laughs> same reason I don't like you. No, I'm just kidding. But you have. To, <laughs> I had a you boyfriend at... and a and a best friend that mocked me for being on the show. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just have to be careful with someone like this because you don't want them to just jump yeah. at decision to decision. She's gonna make quickly a lot of rash problem. decisions. If I was a guy in there, I'd hopefully maybe I could be one of those rash decisions. You know what I'm saying? All right, now this next guy could go one of two <laughs> ways. I think I like him, but I saw his video and I'm not sure. He's Steve Moses, 22, from. Governor, I guess, New York. He's a college student, and he's often compared to Sheldon from the Bing Bang Theory. So the first thing I thought was another Ian. Oh, gosh. I loved Ian. Ian was my man. He won. I liked him the entire time. This guy is a genius. He's, he's a genius who, and first, again, usually I'm not, I get mad when they say how smart they were, but this guy's a friggin' dork. So when he says a genius, I think it's genius, but we're laughing at it. <laughs> I've been, He's a genius who learned how to kiss up to high school teachers and manipulated them to give him recommendations. If he's a genius, how did he have to manipulate these teachers to give him recommendations? Wouldn't they just do that? I don't get that. I think that's CBS spinning some stuff. <laughs> he went to Cornell where he got his degree in medical engineering. My brother's a mechanical engineer, so shout out to him. Here's, here's the part you're going to love. 22-year-old version who doesn't drink or smoke, but he's the wildest and crazy guy at the fraternity. Wow. Um, sure. I'm thinking the other guys get drunk and just kind of laugh at him when he tries to be nuts. But if you're sober, sounds like it. You know, it's that stuff's all personal choices. I'm not, you know, if that's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. I'm not going to blame him. But I saw him on his interview on All Access, and he's right there on the border between being another Ian or another Ronnie, who I don't think you know him. He was from Jeff's original season. I think his name was Ronnie, and he was like uber geek, uber nerd, like. Not in a good way, type thing. Yeah. yeah. So this, you got to straddle the line because this guy's strategy is to act like an idiot child who doesn't know. You know, I'm a, I'm a young virgin. I don't drink, and I sleep with a teddy bear. I'm, you can't worry about me, that kind of thing, and then destroy them from behind. But he may lay, lay that on too thick, and then <laughs> that's that. Yeah. Thoughts, thoughts on that? No, they have so many like early twenty year olds, and then they have a lot of like early thirty year olds as well. So that gameplay is obviously going to come in when you're like, Oh, I'm so young and stupid. Cause you're going to have people like our next person, Vanessa Russo, who's in her early thirties. And I'm sure there are like, 10 years is a long time in life when you're that, when you're talking about that early you development. Forget, if you're 22, yeah, you don't realize how stupid and immature you are. Like, you know, when know. I was 22, I thought I thought I knew the I had the world by the balls. And now I'm 34. I look back. Oh God, I'm just an idiot. Yeah. I have a girl who works at my, at my work. And she's 24, and I'm like, oh, God, she's just a child. And it's not me talking down to them. It's just you don't have the life the life experiences yet. Would you rather be on Big Brother when you're in your early 20s or early 30s? I would say early 20s just because I wouldn't be smart enough to be embarrassed about things I was doing. And now I have a career, and I don't want to screw it up by doing yeah. something stupid. Back when you're 22, you're like, whatever. Plus, when I was 22, there would, the internet wasn't quite what it was today. 
you know, it was around, but it wasn't like there's was no TMZ, there was no Wikipedia, <laughs> there was no YouTube. Yeah. You have to worry about that, all that stuff. So Vanessa Russo couldn't she's slap impressed. it out and wait, worry about TMZ. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, look at Jesse is an idiot. Oh, <laughs> um, he did that Vanessa, podcast one time. <laughs> he's talking about banging on Homeland one time. No, uh, she. I love this. It goes. She's the second fem- the number two female poker player in the world. Dot dot dot. When it comes to playing online and in live what tournaments, what else is there other than online and live tournaments? Who that? I mean, maybe it just means at the house. I mean, or, you know, play with your friends. I don't know. You mean? <laughs> I would just say just leave oh, it at number two. Oh, the for the record, I'm totally putting her on my team, on my fantasy team. We'll see. You know, we find out. We'll, we'll start putting that together tonight or whenever it gets gets out there. Um, maybe maybe we should tweet and see if any of our fans want to join the fantasy league. I think you're right. I think we should see. Maybe we can get one for a little special guest. Maybe it would be embarrassing, though, if no one says yes. Oh, God. We'll, 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 we'll delete that together. We'll be happens. oversubscribed with the thousand, hundreds and thousands of followers we have now. <laughs> so uh, Vanessa's a tomboy, but she's always been very competitive and isn't easily anticipated, anticipated and keeps her emotions in check because, you know, she works as a as a poker player, so she has to keep her cool. Don't get blah, all blah, blah, cocky blah. with it. She's a legitimate i mean 4.5 million dollars since she began come on yes but being good at poker and being able to read people playing poker isn't the same i mean there are obviously some things that go back and forth but i I swear i think i've just seen this before in other shows where they think because they will bluff for a living they can just destroy these people and it never works out these guys all seem so cocky and that's what comes and bites you in the butt she doesn't though okay so we're gonna do something before we leave here okay you've already who do you think is going to be the first out, and who do you think is going to win? The first out, you mean? The, uh, let's at least do um, bottom three or four. Well, what two people have? A, do what two will be in the final, the finale, and what two are going to be the first two kicked out? Okay, I'm going to say Vanessa Russo is going to be in the finale, along with probably I'm going to say James Euling in the finale. Okay. And then the first out, one of the first out is going to be one of these girls, which one I'm not quite sure. It might be like <laughs> Shelly Poole or Liz Nolan. I'm trying to think who's who looks like they're going to be a floater. And who's not? Okay, I'm going to go with. I did kind of bash her, but I think it's going to work out. I don't know why. My final two are going to be Liz. Yeah, she's from Miami. I think. You know, the fact that she is a uh, hopeless romantic, I think that might play in. Or it may go the way as, as Nicole went and lasts for a while and kicked out. Yeah. And um, initially I was going to go with my boy Steve. But I, after watching the video, I just don't, I don't see it. I think oh, this is so hard. I think I think it's going to be Clay, the graduate student. Well, sounds good. Because he's, like he's so handsome. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, and, that sounds oh, like a really I, good prediction. In my first two out, and I didn't finish it. My first two out, in, in no particular order, I think my boy Austin, the wrestler, is going to be kicked to the curb like nobody's business. And I think Devon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Out. So there we go. There we go. Well, that and, wraps it up there. Yeah, and just remember, we were really good at our, our Celebrity Apprentice prediction. Yep. But the, pers- the first person I thought was going to win and picked in my Fantasy League for Survivor was the first person out. So what the hell do I know? Sounds good. All right, we're looking forward to watching it. Oh, so yeah. just remember, uh, in go to our webpage at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. Where else can you go? Facebook.com slash bringmeyourtorch or twitter.com slash bringmeyourtorch without the H. No H. <laughs> no H. Never any H. That's, is that getting old? Yeah, should we keep doing that? Should we love it. Doing? Love it. All right. All right. And you can find us on iTunes. Go there and you can leave us a review and give us five stars. You can find us on Stitcher if you have an Android phone. You can listen to us on yes. YouTube. It's where we get our money, our our pennies that we get. Uh, <laughs> Got to split you know, that. I'm going to sue you. Just Google us. Go to, go, to, go to Bring Me Your Torch. You know, just Google that and we come up with Google me. Google so, me. So we have. Go, 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 Google me. Go, go baby, and, Google, baby Google me. Baby Google me. <laughs> And if you want to be in our fantasy league for Big Brother, just remember to email us at bringmeyourtorch. Dot, was it? At, <laughs> I want to say the webpage. Bringmeyourtorch at gmail.com. Gmail. Gmail. Yep. That's right. Bringmeyourtorch at gmail.com. And we want to hear from you, so send it on in. So uh, until next time, just remember, you may have come here as a stranger, 
but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.